Jess, yes. we, we, we started giving our invitation to systems thinking workshop as a way to try to figure out topics for systems thinking videos. Have you figured out any topics? And now we're actually doing the first one. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen. So um, one of the things, I don't know your experience of it. I've, I've had to go back and reread a bunch of the systems thinking classics. And I'm seeing systems many more places than I was before. Is that? It's almost like what's on your mind is on your mind. Yes. But almost, almost like like that. reproduces itself. Correct. So I was thinking about Jeevan's paradox the other day, and I realized. Wait, who's Jeevan? Jeevan's his name, William Jeevan's. Jeevan's. So it's Jeevan's paradox, but the apostrophe goes after the s. Okay. Jeevan's paradox. Good enough. Mid eighteen hundreds. British guy wrote a book called The Coal Question. The Coal Question. Ooh. And it turns into a beautiful uh, system. What's it look like? <laughs> Glad you asked. Well, we're using more coal. Is that the question? Because we have, no, this is, the, this is a fact. This is an observation. Okay, okay. But we're using so much coal that our available reserves of coal are going down. Oh. That makes sense since coal is a fixed quantity resource. Correct. But that makes people want to use coal more efficiently. Okay, so people want, wait. Less reserves, more efficiency. Um, okay, so. Uh, we say coal decreases reserves, reserves decrease efficiency. Really, we want to say that lower reserves increase efficiency, but that, that arrow with the dot in it says both of those things. Correct. It says that they like move in opposite directions. Correct. And then, the, uh, of course, you increase efficiency, so you use less coal. That's the goal, right? That you so want here we have because it's more efficient. We have this beautiful uh, inhibiting loop. One, two, three dots. Three is an odd number. Therefore, the net effect of this loop is to slow itself down. Correct. We're and hoping that by increasing efficiency, we slow the use of coal. Correct, and our reserves will last longer. And that's exactly the opposite of what happens. And that's Jeevan's paradox because, oh. because as we use, as we increase the efficiency of our steam engines, now there's lots more way economical uses for steam engines. Oh, because, okay. So when we increase the efficiency of coal use, we make, make it more practical to use coal. Sure. Places that it wouldn't have, now we can put it in a sawmill and it didn't make sense to put it in a sawmill anymore. So now we have even more steam engines, okay. which end so, up. So the steam engines in trains that were already using coal are using less coal, but now everybody and their mother is using coal for other things. Bingo, bingo. And now we have one, two dots, reinforcing loop. So now we have both a uh, inhibiting loop and a reinforcing loop. Right. But in this case, the reinforcing loop is much stronger. You can ignore the effect of efficiency on reducing coal use in only the existing places because all the new uses for the now cheaper, more efficient coal uh, dwarf it. Correct. And how, how much would you pay for this positive feedback loop? Don't answer that question. There's more. Is that the coal question? How much would you pay for this? No, the coal question is, we made coal use more efficient and now we're using more coal, WTF. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, I love paradoxes because they expose common sense thinking that is wrong. This is wrong. 
Correct. Yeah. There, it gets worse because the because steam engines are an efficient way of applying power. The okay. more economical uses there are, the bigger the economy gets. Okay. So Just that's like, good, right? It, well, except that the bigger the economy is, the more money there is to pay for more steam engines, which leads to more coal use. And now we have a double reinforcing Another loop. Another reinforcing loop. They often drive each other. And we end up using lots and lots and lots of coal. And this is a cycle that started in the 1800s and continued until this century. Until we had something else to use besides coal? That reduced the relative efficiency of coal compared to efficiency. solar and nat well, natural gas first. Okay. And then solar. Okay, so this is saying that if you want to reduce the use of coal, don't make coal more efficient. Make something else that's cheaper. Yes. And this is also a good example of, uh, of a reinforcing loop, the way you can drive reinforcing loops both ways. Because when the efficiency of coal relative, uh, when that, when that gets better, we're going to use more coal, which is going to drive this further and further. Mm -hmm. Now, but that's, we can drive that same loop the other way. Mm. Because... Solar comes along, it's on a steeper improvement curve. Coal, I, I, coal okay. gets, coal gets, is less, uh, uh, less economic than solar. But solar, as soon as solar, the, the slope of the curve of improvement for solar gets, uh, in, the more it gets better, the less reason you have to invest in coal efficiency. So coal use goes down and the more coal use goes down, the, the bigger the gap is. That's a different uh, circle than you've drawn here uh, no. because in general, feedback loops can run the other way. For instance, when you have a recession, the economy gets smaller, coal use decreases. That might drive down the economy, at least for coal farmers. Um, which would then decrease the use of coal again. <laughs> coal farmers is the technical term, yes. <laughs> uh, but this other reinforcing loop, sorry, technicality, but I got to point out, reserves never go up. Correct. Uh, unless you say accessible reserves, like reserves worth mining, that absolutely goes up um, as price goes up. Yes, or you might want to, you might want to put pollution in here, or, or uh, if you care about that. Yeah, yes, if you care about <laughs> Which that. Which we do. Um, if we put that into the if if that's the reason to improve efficiency, more coal, more pollution. Ah, undo, undo, undo. Where's my undo? More coal, There's no undo more pollution. On this. Oh, there we go. More coal, more pollution. The more pollution there is, the more reason we have to be e efficient. Okay. So as we stop using as much coal, the pollution goes down. It's less of a problem. We stop investing in coal efficiency, which winds up being a win because that was not a positive uh, for reducing coal use. Right. Um, so, th so it turns out that the way to reduce coal pollution is not to make more efficient coal use. It's to make an alternative. Yes, short term, you might want to improve efficiency, but just don't expect it to result in lower coal Oh, use. that's true. Because if you improve efficiency in the very short term, um, you might see the result you wanted. Yeah, Those I mean, particular if trains. Oh, if you're only measuring the pollution from the existing trains, you'll think it worked. Yes. And you'll wonder why your cities continue to get smoggier, which is because there's all the other coal use that you weren't measuring, which you have se severely affected with your intervention Correct. of improving efficiency. 
um, yeah, that, that, so that's, um, what, what do you call it? The side effect externality. That's an externality. Yes. It's something that happens outside of the system you are measuring. Right. So this is Jeevan's paradox. Visualized as a system. And it makes perfect sense to me as a, as a s system of effects. Yeah, it's, it's a good example of what appeared to be a paradox is not when you start using systems thinking. Correct. And looking for those externalities. What else is happening here? Yep. All right. Let's do another one soon. All right. Thanks, Kent. Thank you.